hey, how are you? It's uh, me, Jean, and I'm going to ask you a question. All right, do you find your child struggling on getting an assignment started, especially like a writing assignment? They write their first sentence, they erase it. They write it, they scribble it out. They write it over and over again, and you're thinking, oh my goodness, this is going to take forever for them to get that assignment, right? Hi, Laura. It's gonna take them forever to get that assignment done. Does that sound like what goes on in your home sometimes? Or maybe even for yourself? I know there are some times when I start writing and I think I have to have a caption. I have to have the title to my story first before I can get started. And that is actually not true. The title is probably one of the last things that you want to uh, put on the top but for our kids who feel like that first sentence has to be perfect perfect before they can move on is that happening in your home hi I'm Jean Harbaugh and I am the creator of this page helping kids with reading also the uh, free Facebook group raising kids who love to read by Jean Harbaugh I'm also the creator of the reading confidence Academy so what exactly is perfectionism and is this a good thing or not a good thing i know some may say gee i wish my child would at least try and um and get something written down you know uh and maybe if if you think that your child needs to um i, I don't know what you're thinking is that your child needs to make a really good grade on this paper so you it should be perfect I don't know. So let's explore some of that, okay? So perfectionism in psychology is a broad personality style characterized by a person's concern with striving for flawlessness and perfection. And it comes with being very critical about what they produce. So the refusal to accept any standard short of perfection. So that's a pretty strong definition. And it can be daunting in trying to achieve perfectionism. Do you know anyone that has achieved perfectionism? And the thing is, though, you can't judge that because what perfectionism to you may be different than the perfectionism to the person who you're judging. So <clears throat> it is, it is a, 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 ju a judgment. It's a judgment that we're making about our own work. How about your kids? The kids who had difficulty in regulating, they themselves can have difficulty in moving forward with an assignment, like a drawing maybe. I have watched, I know my son, when he was growing up, he would lay all of his work out and he was a fantastic artist, but it had to be perfect. He spent hours and he would get those special art erasers and erase and draw and erase and draw over and over again and at first I thought wow this is amazing that he's so uh, into his project into his artwork that he wants it to be perfect in his eyes okay it's always going to be in their eyes it may not you know for someone else to look at it they are thinking wow this is amazing it didn't matter what I thought about what my child was doing it only mattered what he thought about his own work so that in itself can cause frustration and that can cause anxiety in someone who uh, wants to always be perfect. If you think about yourself, if you're that way, it has to be perfect or else if you don't do it at all. It causes that frustration and anxiety inside and within. So it isn't, um, it isn't just about doing a good job. It's being too anxious about the small details. This is what was interesting because it's not the overall job, but it's those details that you get hung up on. The details in the story, the details in the drawing, the details in that song that you're writing. You can't get past it, you get stuck, you get stuck because that one small thing that probably would not make any difference in the way it presents is it has to be perfect so you keep going back over and over again you see this laura and your little girl and she's only four right yeah it, it is kind of interesting so those the, the small details can keep from moving forward you waste time and oftentimes the assignment doesn't even get done they just throw you know wired up throw it away they're so frustrated it doesn't even get completed 
So, like I say, I recognize this in myself. Just even a couple of days ago, I was writing something, and it just wasn't sounding right. It wasn't sounding the way I wanted it to write. So, I said, okay, I'm going to get up. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to just talk this out in my own, under my breath, just going to talk it out. And then when I realized, like, oh, that's what I wanted to say, came back, and I would write that. And I would write for just a little bit. And then I would look at it again, and I would get stuck. Why am I stuck? It doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing has to be perfect. Nobody is going to judge anything as being perfect, right? But then I would get stuck again. I'd have to get up and walk away and go do something different in order to come back to finish again. So that's my coping, my coping, um, copenism. Does that sound right? <laughs> and how I deal with when I get stuck on something, I need to just stop. I just need to walk away. But it's taken me to this point in my life to realize that, that it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so um, another area, uh, we were talking about the expressive writing, right? What about um, math? Kids that become obsessed over writing numbers in a straight line, perfectly straight, have no eraser marks at all on their paper. And oftentimes they'll just stop, wad up the paper, throw it away. And maybe everything on there was correct. But the way it looked, it wasn't lined up, it had eraser marks. Then it just had to, you know, it just had to just go, had to go away. Because I couldn't turn in this paper because it was messy, right? So what is it, you know, what are kids telling themselves? Um, and why is it important that their outward work reflect perfectionism? Perhaps they feel their inward their outward reflects their inward being or their inward worth, perhaps. Maybe they are not feeling, you know, worthy or safe to allow others to view their work or to realize that they're not perfect. Maybe there's this wall that they're wanting to present and they don't want anyone to break into it to say, ah, see, you're not perfect. So what it is, you know, it's going to be different for each person, different for each, each child. So think about it yourself. If you feel like you have that perfectionism that's going on and everything has to be just right, start asking yourself, why? Why is it so? Why does it have to be perfect? What does this mean about me that everything has to be perfect? And just start going down that why, asking yourself why. Every single level that you uncover, why is that important? What does that mean about you? Bring it down to that bare bone basic. And this is something you can do with your kids who can understand when you're asking why and that can analyze and deep think um, with themselves. Why is it important that this is absolutely perfect? What does that mean about you? And what is and why is that important? And why is that is important? What does it mean? And when you start asking these questions, then they can start analyzing it themselves too. Because when they get stuck on an assignment, they could stop and say, "Wait, something is not right. I'm not regulating myself. Why does this have to be perfect? And what would happen if it wasn't perfect? What would happen? What would it mean about me?" if it wasn't perfect and bring it down and we were talking about the other day we have those basic identity the basic needs we need to feel loved we need to feel worthy valued we need to feel enough we need to feel um safe right to feel safe so i think that you know when we start taking a look at how we are um, talking to our kids and Laura you're right I'm learning to praise her character strengths instead of what she achieves academically or the way she does things that's exactly correct I was getting ready to get to that point I love that you said that because what we should be praising is their effort not the outcome is the effort that they are doing the work and they are putting a lot of um, attention to it um, or that they that they completed the job right and and i think that that's really really important and not on the actual thing that they're working on right so i think that having that series of why questions what does it mean about you um you know 
what you know what why does it need to be perfect and have them to um, ask themselves these questions and remember a time and then now then remember a time uh, when they did something that wasn't perfect when was it that you that you did something when it wasn't perfect what happened probably nothing right and what were the consequences how did you feel about yourself not being perfect and they probably realized that it didn't matter after all right or if they did then you could take them again why was that important what does that mean about you and get to the underlying feeling of what's going on because that's where you can start that's where you can start building your child and that's where you can start you know having them to reflect on the time you know like a, a particular thing that they did maybe riding a bike running to ride a bike you know and they kept getting mad and frustrated at themselves because they couldn't just hop on and push the pedals and ride just like everybody else and be a perfect bike rider right and so having them to see the process that they went through and the process that they had to teach their body and teach their brain in order to coordinate itself um, themselves and then were you were you finally able to ride that bike the way you wanted to well yeah but you were so hard on yourself to get to that point so i think that it's really important that we work with our kids to find out what is that underlying um, belief they have about themselves the same with you work on yourself as well what is that underlying belief that i am feeling about me about who i am and then start finding refuting those beliefs like finding um reasons and evidence why that's just not true it's not true right so that's how we can help our kids to overcome perfectionism and and um and i think that's really important that we do that as well so thank you for being here on the live i really really appreciate when you when you all come and also i'm going to put a link down below if you want to take this any deeper any further you can connect with that um link is that it's my calendar link and we can have like a brief 15 minute uh, call on zoom uh, and take this a little bit deeper deeper if you have some concerns or or try to figure out a way to combat that perfectionism either within yourself or, or within your child as well so i'll put that link below also i wanted to let you know that we're going to be opening the reading um confidence academy uh sometime in december i believe but before that i have a free three uh, part workshop series that'll be coming up and i don't have the exact dates yet but as soon as i know the date for registration i will i can email you what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a link down below that's a wait list that you can actually pop your name on the wait list and your email and then that way i can uh, notify you when registration opens up and you can be one of the first to register it's free it's just it's free and you'll be able to and then i'll let you know when the three series uh, will begin and you will be able to participate with that and it's free and it's awesome and it's i've never done it before and i'm having such a great time putting it together so i will put those links um either up up top or below and you can find them and and click on them and get on the wait list so i will talk to you all later bye bye